Alright, so we finished Ludwig's Castle. We've beaten most of the game. Now, we trudge into <laughs> Forest of Illusion. The hardest part of Lunar Dragon. I think, by a long shot. Good news is, it starts out fairly simple. When you start here, don't worry about fast fly. Just make sure to cape over that. Make sure to cape over those note blocks. Then you can worry about fast fly. Your goal here, I usually try and do a hold here and then dive bomb through that gap. You need to get through that gap so they can get to here, get this key, and we can get the secret exit. That'll take us to Ghost House. Ghost House does have coins. So, my movements here are going to be very, very specific to get through here quickly and without taking damage. Spin, jump, jump. We're doing a lot of deboosting to get through here. Jump, jump. I usually hold and then let go of, uh, let go of normal jump once I'm through the boo. You could do a spin. I think you could do a spin there. No, I think what you, I think, I think what people used to do was this, like a, like they fall and then fly up. I can't remember. I've always stuck doing this though. I do a normal jump into the ceiling and then cape back to get through there. Spin up and then I'm gonna want to spin jump at this post. And then we're gonna do a full spin jump. Boom. And then you can get into the door. Now, if you want to be safer, uh, this is what I do. Actually, yeah, this is what I do. It's a little bit slower than picking up the cape later, but we can pick up a cape here. So if you're worried about taking damage in the next room, you can do that. Grab the coin, drop down. You should land on an eerie. And cause the cape to pop out. Then you just collect it and get in the door. It's a pretty small time loss. This room, I do four spin jumps here. Oops. So the timing on them is really weird. You want the last spin jump to be kind of like that, where I was holding the spin jump, but I didn't go high. Hold, do a, just a real small tap. Two cape backs, jump, and then land on the P-switch. This room is very difficult. Tap B, two cape backs, collect that one, jump when you pick up the P-switch, drop the P-switch, and then land on top of it. Really clean when you get it, but it will take a little practice before you can really nail it. If you are unlucky, you can get hit. Even doing this strat, it's not 100% perfect. Or 100% safe. If you do get hit, just pick up your backup cape and move on. And just have no fear. <laughs> just assume that everything will work. Uh, this room, just get P-Speed, land here, P-Speed, and then you want to do another jump right about here, the fourth, the fourth black line in, the fourth tile, after the fourth tile. That'll land you right on the coin, and then you can get in the door. And then you're all set. So, everything together, this is a pretty complicated level. Everything together looks something like this. This is a tough level that can go fast. Oop. Damn 
against it, so pick up the cape that way. I think it's better to jump early than late to make sure that the cape stuff lines up well. That was super clean. That was a good room. And you're home free. Pretty tough, but definitely doable. Next level's Forest 1. Super easy. We're just caping over it again. If for whatever reason, let's say you got hit in the last level. Actually, no. Ignore me. Just cape over this level. <laughs> Go for fast fly. When you're practicing, just try and recognize what the fast fly looks like. Nothing to this level once you get past that uh, note block. <sighs> Forest of Illusion 2. This level is almost guaranteed to not go right. Something will mess up. Guaranteed, every time. Uh, if you don't have a backup cave, get one here. We're going to want to de-boost into this guy to get past him. Wait for him to get by. Do a lot of that cape movement that we talked about in uh, Planes 2. Planes 2? Planes Secret. Kill this fish. Okay, here's where things are going to get hard. If you're, really, if you're really lucky, you can actually sneak past the Surchin. But it's tough to do. Kick up, grab it to keep going with it. Kill that fish. Oh, God. Okay. It's very important that you don't kill anything more than what you're supposed to. Otherwise, the strat won't work. The only fish we're going to try and kill is this, this one green one. Cape keeps killing the other one. Alright, then you can cape under here. This urchin will be missing. And you can cape further in. Or not cape, but swim further in. After that, squeak past these two urchins. Just kill that one. Hang out in the top right here. And then drop right around when this urchin gets to the middle. Like, once this urchin gets to here for the first time... That's usually a good signal that you can drop without hitting the urchin down there. Whoop! You're not supposed to be there yet. <sighs> Needless to say, this strat is exceptionally difficult. And the idea is we want to just keep that. We want to despawn the urchin. So he doesn't get in our way. And we want to keep that block for as long as possible. So just drop all the way down. Spin just in case that guy is like really close to you. And then I like to swim at the top here. Swim into this corner. Like dip a bit. Swim into that corner. And then by the time you land, if you swim up, you're just guaranteed to get the key in the hole. It's kind of a weird setup, but it works. Every time. I can't. I can't get high enough. Oh. 
So presumably you get what I mean about this being super annoying as a strat. Get in that top right corner, wait for that urchin to pass the median, drop. You actually go a little bit earlier. I held too far left, so I landed. And you're good. Alright, so if something like this happens instead, you're just going to have to wait for the urchin, unfortunately. But you should be able to continue after that point. The same as before. So yeah, everything else is the same. It's just a matter of whether or not you can manage to keep this purple block without killing anything more than that one fish. If you kill more than that one fish... Oops. Let's say... Let's say you do something like this. He's still there. Oops. Still there. This level is just like... It's all about spawn timers and, like, sprite limits and other nonsense. I don't entirely know why some things work and other things don't. I just know what has been consistent for me. And the only way I've ever been able to get this consistent is if I only kill that green fish. And look, he's gone. This is probably, I would say, this is the hardest exit in the game to get optimal. Just because of that one strat, I would say. Getting the coins is probably, no, getting the coins is really hard to get optimal to. Both of these are just really hard. <laughs> Blue Switch Palace, though, not hard. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Whoops. We're going to cape through this hallway. Oops. I completely missed the thing. No, I'm in the thing. Whatever. We cape through the hallway. And then we hit the switch. That's all we do. Nothing has changed. Forest 2. This is where we're picking up the coins. Get the backup cape if you need it. You most likely will. So, when you're doing this, you can keep the purple block while still killing the urchins. There you see I just snuck through. And that is faster. But it's a little hard to do. This time we're just going to kick that to the left and get rid of it. Fall, tap once. Ah, I'll show you what I was going to do there in a minute. I usually give up on it. Because stuff like that happens. <laughs> and it makes me mad. I've, had, I've also had it just go through the urchin and not kill him at all. Why it happens, I have no idea, but up to you whether or not you want to go for it. It is faster. 
Grab purple block, just kick it up and leave it. Fall, one tap with press down, and then go left to kill that guy. Kill this fish, swim to the ceiling above, and then right screen scroll. Hold R to screen scroll to the right. That will cause this sea urchin to disappear. He'll despawn and we can just swim out. If, as long as you don't kill anything else, that should also cause this urchin to disappear. So now we can continue. Try and drop here so that we can keep this and you can actually squeak in between that urchin right there. It's pretty tough to do. Chat's making fun of my inability to speak words. It's pretty tough to do. A lot of times I just end up kicking it on accident. But if you can manage it, it is pretty nice because you don't you skip that cycle entirely. If it doesn't work, just do what we did before. Wait up in that top right corner. Once he passes the median fall. Just make sure to go to the right instead of falling down left. See, like, right there, I kicked it. I don't want to kick it. It's really tough to squeak by that guy. If you get hit, obviously you have the backup cape. Well, if you get hit... And you don't have a backup cape because you deboosted at the start. Just go back into the beginning of the level to get a cape. Thankfully, this level just has a cape at the start. So it's not the end of the world if you get hit, but... Obviously sucks if it happens. See, like that. Green fish was, like, way out of position. It might be worth stalling a bit. I've had issues trying to kill that rip, rip Van Fish before, though. Where I'll be swinging at him, and he'll just, like, go above my hitbox and hit me. So, just be careful. Uh, everything from the beginning should look something like this. head and screen scroll. If you don't hit your head, the urchin doesn't despawn sometimes. No idea why. <laughs> just just happens that way. Oh, that sucks. All right, well don't don't let that happen. <laughs> At the end here, if you go up and over, you're almost guaranteed to dodge that guy every time. He just doesn't have enough time to turn around to hit you. And that's FOI 2. It's extremely hard. Probably, I would say the hardest level in the run to get right. And so much can go wrong. But... At least with this route, we have the backup here. Like, you have the capes. Just keep them. <laughs> or go back for them if you need them. Uh, Illusion 3. We're going to collect the coins here. This opening jump is really kind of weird. 
I get P-Speed, and then I try and jump right when I'm below this branch. And I do, like, a mid-jump so that I'm not too high, but I'm also not just tapping it. You can't do double taps. I guess you can. Alright, you can also do double taps. I thought double tap didn't work, but apparently it does. So, just do a double tap, and we're going to fly. Fly up until the screen. You're going to not above the screen, because, like, right there, I flew above the screen and I wasn't able to collect it. You're going to go, like, just below, like, right up to the item box. Fly up to the item box and then let go. Here you want to go above the screen, collect that coin. Just one jump, tap jump, full jump, drop when you drop when you see this item box go off screen. So jump to the item box, collect that coin, jump between these two blocks above screen, tap jump, tap jump. Jump and hold, let go because that box went off, collect that coin. And then full jump to the end. If if you took damage and you don't have a backup cape, so like you didn't get through uh, FOI 2 without taking damage to the urchin at the start, pop that bubble and then collect this guy and use him for a backup cape. I think the, the bomb's the easiest one to use. I've tried to use the Goomba in the past. The problem with the Goomba is that he like walks off and then now you have to chase him down. The bomb's right there next to the coin, just collect him. There appears to be liars in my chat, Kappa. Um, okay. Same startup as before. In fact, the very beginning of this is the exact same as what we did last time. The only difference is that once we get to here, you're going to want to spin jump at this post instead of this post. So, spin jump much earlier. And we want to get up here. And then we're going to jump over this barricade. Much like a lot of other walls in Super Mario World, they're more of a suggestion than a rule. As long as you can cape high enough, you can get over it. And that's what we're gonna do. Get over it, cape over to this first door, and you're good to go. That's going to take us to Forest 4, where we're just going to cape to the secret exit. Be careful, Vlakitu. He is the worst person on the planet. Yo, what's up, Lee? Get in this pipe. Use the key. Uh, if you need visual cues... For where the pipe is. I would say fly pretty high until the Lakitu comes in. After you bounce on the Lakitu, you should see that coin, and you should see the checkpoint. The checkpoint's gonna be right before the pipe. So keep an eye out for that stuff if you don't know where the pipe is already. <laughs> this next level. Forest Secret Area is one of the most obnoxious strats in the game. I'm going to run to the right. I'm going to spin jump onto these platforms. I usually spin jump right around here. You can see where the uh, the ground texture has like an extra like... It dips down in a different way. That's usually where I jump. And then we're going to... We're going to have to circle around to get a coin and then get speed to get the rest. I'll show you what I mean. Oh. 
this level is the worst. Off screen, come back, get that coin, jump, and then now we can cape to the end of the level. I usually warn people about motion sickness in this level because it's just, this background is awful. The good news is, it's pretty much autopilot once you get these first two coins. This first coin is really hard to get. Things like that happen. Things like that happen. Like, it's really finicky. If you're worried about it, I would err on the side of caution and maybe do something like this. Collect it and maybe, like, go back. Ooh. Reminder that if you go back, it's going to make the background scroll twice as fast, though. But that is a, a, safe, a safer strat. So here's an instance where you kind of have to go back. How fast can it go? I think it just doubles. I don't think it goes faster after that. <sighs> Collecting this for first coin is... One of the worst parts of the run. <laughs> It's so frustratingly hard. If you want to be a god, you can do this. <laughs> but it's going to be slower. Oh no! Pretty much boned at this point. All right. I wonder if there is a way you could. I don't think there is. There's no way. Well, maybe there is. Let's see. Let's experiment a bit. I can't see. Issue is that the screen wouldn't scroll back up. Kind of want to mess with this though. You heard I collected the last one. I think these ones are too high. I don't know if I can actually cape that high. Off screen. Probably not. So if you did something like this, you'd probably still have to turn around and come back. For now, I guess that's still the best. The best strat. It sucks. I hate it. <laughs> but it's all we have, unfortunately. At least for now. After that, we have Forest Secret, or Forest Fortress, sorry. This first bit's an auto-scroller, do, do whatever you want. If you're worried about taking damage, you can actually cape. If you uh, get P-Speed at the start and then jump and turn around, you can just cape in the top left corner. It's super safe. The Crushers can't do anything to you. There's only one spot where the saws can hit you. So this saw will normally hit you. You can get around it still. But then you can just get cape. You just cape into the corner again. And then you want to 
get out of flight there because we need to get through this door ASAP. So, this strat is weird. It's taken me a long time to figure it out. <laughs> but here's how it works. So there's actually a better strat for this ending, but this is the one that's been consistent for me, so I stick to it. That's what you're looking to do. If you don't mash X for these spins, it won't work. I don't know why, but you'll always, you'll always get hit by a fireball. I think mashing spin causes the screen to scroll later, maybe? It definitely seems like that's what it is, but you have to mash, you have to mash spin. But you also still need to, like, keep running, so you kind of have to just use both run buttons. And as long as you jump, uh, I should know, I should know, I'm jumping right here. This third, this third, uh, black line where the two blocks meet is where I jump. Full jump. Land on that platform. As you run off, you should get flight and you'll be able to cape over that gap. Get flight again, and then we're gonna bounce off some fireballs to the end. This Resner's usually pretty aggressive, Forest Resner. He tends to shoot a lot of fireballs. So just do the jump strat we talked about in Vanilla Fortress. And you should be safe. After that, we're going back to Forest 4. Here's the downside to Forest 4. We need to pick up a Fire Flower. I have two strats for this, and I've been messing them both up a lot lately. The first strat is if that happens and the uh, Lakitu dies. If the Lakitu dies, you can pick up the Fire Flower here. And keep moving. So you'll notice I need to drop to get that first coin. And we can pick up this fire flower. And we can pick up a second coin. I usually I usually try and jump like purposely late so that that doesn't happen. Like I'll just jump a little bit late so that I do that. I fall until I hit that uh what do you call that? Just like a background circle. <laughs> It's important when you're doing this not to fly too high, because the higher you fly, the longer you have to wait for the cape to fall. So try and cut that short as much as possible. Background circle. What do you want from me, chat? That pretty much puts you right there. I didn't get very much height, which is why that didn't work. And then, optimally from here, you would cape. You would go fly up. Collect this coin, come down. Collect this coin, and you're good. I've struggled so hard trying to figure out how to consistently do that. And frankly, I've given up. So now instead... I grab this P-switch, fly up this way, grab that coin, tap, tap to grab that last coin. It's important that you, when you grab the P-switch, you immediately jump to kill some of your flight meter. 
Because if you wait too long, this will happen. Oh, of course it worked. After I say it won't work. But let's try this. Yeah, that'll happen. Which sucks. <laughs> so it's safer if you just do doot. And then... Oh, that, see, like... I struggled so hard to come up with a strat for this. And then even this strat has problems. I don't know why this level is just laid out in such an evil way. But... It's so hard to get through this level without taking damage or slowing down. But this is what I mostly go for. It's not as fast, but... It is, in theory, safer. <laughs> so then, from the beginning... He died. So we collect that coin. We get this backup cake, or back, or this fire flower, sorry. Kill him. Jump late so that we get P speed. Land on the black circle, or dark circle. P switch tap, jump. Fly up. Collect that coin. And then two taps to get the last one. Don't carry the P switch past the goal tape. It'll turn into a, a cape, and then it'll get rid of the fire flower we, we worked so hard to get. Now, the other thing that'll happen is that you won't kill him. And if you don't kill him, I usually fly past this, do a flight at the end of this platform, and then double back a bit to kill him. And then pick up the fire flower here. It's a little bit sketchier. No, this is this is vanilla SMW. It's just really hard to do beat this game this way, collecting all these coins quickly. So double back. I usually drop the I usually drop the cape as I collect the fire flower. It's actually, if you're doing this, this is the backup strat. And if you're doing it, don't... It's very tempting to do this, but don't do that. You should be able to build peace speed without doing that. Like this... What happens is you end up losing all your flight, and now you land here. Instead, just turn around like normal, and then jump into it. And then land on the same circle. The rest of this is the exact same as you see. Oh yeah, this is a practice ROM, a practice ROM hack. But all the levels and stuff are identical to vanilla. See, I did the jump, and it messed everything up. Don't do the jump, chat. It's not worth. Hey, what's up, Justified? So then, everything together. I'll do a couple of runs. new idea of what to do in each scenario. So he's dead, so we're going to do the first strat. He's 
not dead, so we're gonna do the second strat. Ugh. No! <laughs> second strat is sketchier by nature of being a backup. God! There's gotta be a way to, to not get hit by that guy all the time. Alright, so he's dead. Not dead. And I should mention the reason we're killing Lakitu is because him him throwing spinies is completely like super RNG. It's not even based on stuff you do. So trying to predict when he's going to throw a spiny, it's a nightmare. It's better to just kill him. <clears throat> After that, we'll have completed everything in Force of Illusion except for the exit to the castle and the castle itself. Since we already collected the coins here, we just fly over everything. Try to get fast fly. Oh, try not to cape over this pipe like I just did. And then just... Oh, this room sucks. Obviously, the ideal is to do something like that. But it's super easy to accidentally break... The entire row sometimes. It just, it's hard. Don't stress if you hit too many of the blocks. All right. After all that, thankfully we have a really easy castle to do. Ha! That's a joke. This castle is one of the hardest ones to do. So, what we're going to try and do is something like this. Once I actually do it. Oops. Something like that, but faster. Step one. I jump when I hit this uh, crack in the ceiling. I jump into that. I keep back once. Immediately, dive bomb to collect the first coin. After that, pull back up. You're going to want to bonk your head twice pretty quickly and then dive bomb past the fireballs. You're going to have to get a feel for the timing because depending on when you pull back, how tight your pullbacks were, all that stuff, how quickly you hit the ceiling, it's going to put you in different positions and you're going to have to just kind of go by feel. But the basic setup is two bounces dive bomb after the first dive bomb. So back dive bomb. One, two, dive bomb. See, I did it too early because I didn't I didn't account for the fact that one of those was really shallow. Dive bomb. Oops. After that, it's fairly easy. The really scary part is this opening. Uh, okay. 
spaced out for a second. Whoop. So you can either try and cape up here like this, or if you're worried about something like this happening, which can definitely happen, it's really not much slower to just do that. After you collect the P-Switch, you're going to run up to this Potaboo. I think that's what they're called, right? Fireball guy? Run up to that one. Tap jump, tap jump. Your goal is to spread those taps out so that you're getting over this statue. Tap, 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 tap to collect that coin. Tap at the ceiling and then swap. The exact same taps that you did to pass the statue. Oops, don't do it too late though. All together, it looks a little something like this. So I noticed that my first cape back was really late. So I did my later uh, bonks more shallow to make up for it. And then same deal as always, double jump or double fireball jump. And that is Forest of Illusion. <sighs> we went through a lot. This is another one of those episodes that's just really, really heavy on str strats and tricks and tips and stuff like that.